Wait, 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 wait there's something going okay. on. Okay, please ask his technical, please ask the lower. Um, so, with this change, uh, the amended motion, assuming this amendment passes, would say an artist or cartoonist whose work has appeared through publication in some posings or fanzines or through other public non professional display, including at a convention or conventions, during the, during the previous calendar year. So, uh, that's what the amended. Uh, Text would read if this amendment passes. So the question is on the amendment. Uh, there are further speeches on the amendment. Yes. Speech against. Oh, I think that was the amendment. Oh, okay. Chris Scott. Right. So, uh, Chris Garcia again. Hey, hi, Scott. Um, the basic problem here is that we are redefining something that had a wonderful definition for dozens and dozens of years, and why I like this amendment a lot is actually for, not for including non-professional with the convention, any of that, but it's because it retains the word cartoonist. <laughs> and that, that to me, the striking that would really be a blow completely to the long history of fan art. Yeah. And Ben, you're awesome. Yes, we should. <laughs> Against the amendment. Yeah. Yeah. The addition of in any medium includes cartoonists um, as part of it. Explicitly pointing out cartoonists implies that cartoonists are not producing art, but they are. Matilda <laughs> Olson, I don't think most of us are qualified to do distinguish between art slash or crafts. I don't think we're qualified to distinguish between what is dramatic and non-dramatic. I like the fact that this amendment keeps this category extremely clean, extremely understandable. And I think that is very, very important. Whether it needs to get changed in future years as we put in things like uh, podcasts and split dramatic presentation, that's something to think about at some other time. But by opening up this category, I think we really start blurring the lines about what we want to do. And that's why I support this amendment. Speech against? Yeah. Oh, well, was all time exhausted? Or? Okay, so the additional t extension to debate time has been exhausted. Um, so the question is on the amendment, to which would change this so that it would only insert non professional and insert including at a convention or conventions. Those who are in favor of that change, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and so the question works on the constitutional amendment, which uh, basically would change the constitution by inserting non-professional. Move to extend debate by five minutes. And including a convention or convention. Is there a second for the motion to extend debate? Second. All those in favor of extending debate, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The nays have it. The debate time is not extended. Vote on the constitutional amendment. Those in favor of the constitutional amendment as amended, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you, the ayes have it, and this will, the constitutional amendment as amended, so that all it does is insert not professional and insert including at a convention or conventions. That form of this amendment will appear for ratification next year. The next item is the Mark Protection Committee elections. Uh, yes? I like the draw. Ah, okay. Um, the, I, I guess the, the, one of the, uh, the dev dice would like to withdraw, uh, which is you know, the people are required to give their consent. Uh, with her withdrawal, there are only three candidates, and due to regional restrictions, I believe uh, you know, that's the, really the only thing we can do is elect those three. Um, so, is there any objection to declaring the three remaining candidates to be elected by acclamation? Say again. So, the advice was withdrawn, so there's only three candidates for three positions, and they happen to be appropriately spread across the zones and everything. So, unless there's some objection on this, to declare the three elected by acclamation. Seeing no objection, uh, you know, only North Kevin Bentley and Benny Allo were elected for three year terms to the Mark Protection Committee. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Yeah. Since we're at that point in the agenda, I need to. I have a mark. Sure. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, the Market Protection Committee, when it met on Thursday, um, has said that it will attempt to meet <coughs> after the site selection business <coughs> meeting and the World Con Chairs photo, which will ha uh, happen in this room tomorrow, if, we will, if there is enough time for us to do so. So the meeting that is in the uh, program for Monday uh, would be moved forward to right after the WISPAS business meeting, if there is enough time to do so. If we do happen to run long tomorrow so that we use up the entire time, uh, the Mark Committee meeting will then happen in the slot that would be the overflow Christmas business meeting on Monday. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would ask if there's any questions anyone have about what that scheduling is because it is a little complicated. Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and, and yes, I will write to the newsletter about it. Okay, so actually, I, I, one thing I was going to do that I've forgotten to do is, uh, is this theory that, uh, that when I say the eyes have it, I should, should point. They <laughs> fell off. They <laughs> fell off. <laughs> 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 well, Stick them on the back of your computer screen. They'll stay there. <laughs> All the better. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Arms could bring the duct tape. change the Constitution uh, for essentially no effect because we've never actually gone to the point where it was close to three quarters. It's either nearly unanimous or, 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 or uh, much closer to a majority, if, if that, when we vote on these extensions. Um, I don't think this is needed. I don't think it's useful. And I think it's just silly. Speech in favor? Yeah. I think that extensions should be hard to get. Um, they should require far more than a majority. On the other hand, I don't think we should say that we really, really, really don't like the principle of extensions and by saying, boy, this requires more than anything else that we ever do, we're saying we really don't like extensions. And I like extensions. I think they have provided good candidates in the past and will continue to do so. So I'd like to send the message that says, extensions are a reasonable thing to do. 
Mark, Mark Olson, uh, I've voted for most extensions. I'll doubtless continue to vote for most extensions, but when this, or, this meeting here decides to give one work an advantage over another, it should be very, very hard, and we should be very, very sure of ourselves. Speech in favor? Yes. I'm still Kate Secor. Two comments. One, if the foolish consistency is the hub line of small minds, so is a foolish adherence to tradition merely because that's what the tradition is. Um, second, do we really have to be any more sure of ourselves to extend eligibility for a work than we do to amend the Constitution that makes the work eligible in the first place? <laughs> Was that a motion to make it two years in a row with the I don't think so. Mark did actually uh, just harp on the point I was coming up here to say. The, it is substantially harder to, to amend the Constitution, requiring the two-thirds majority, or requiring a majority twice, uh, whereas this three-quarters majority, or supermajority, it, it's the only shot we have at it. We ought to get it right. Howard Rosenblatt, I managed to wait after three hours before I got up here um, this year. I think that, uh, I, I agree with Ben's analysis and, and, and the way you spoke previously. I think two-thirds supermajority is the standard. I think to make it three-fourths sends a message and it's not necessarily the message we want to send. I understand what Mark is saying, that an extension is a, a special issue, but I think a two-thirds majority is sufficient to accomplish that. Debate time has expired on this item. Proceed to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. This will be passed on for potential ratification next year. Next item, 1.4.4, uh, two-thirds is good enough. Part two. Sure. Secretary, you'd like us to call us for Sure. So this is also four minutes. This amends the other part of the Constitution in which good works can be extended. Move to call the question. Second. Yes, thank you. Is there anybody who wishes to speak to this motion? Uh, Okay. Yeah, in that case, point of order, the motion's illegal. The, the call of question is illegal without waiting until somebody's had a chance. Yes. I refer people to all of the points already made. <laughs> on, both, on both sides. Move to call the question. No. <laughs> <laughs> under, under, under our rules, there's a vote to move and second to call the question. I'm required to ask for a show of hands by those who still wish to speak. Show of hands, please. Thank you. We'll now vote on the call of question. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. There being more than two-thirds in favor, the question is called. Those in favor of this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Being uh, majority in favor, uh, the ayes have it. Uh, I didn't have it. And um, the constitutional amendment will be passed on for ratification next year. <coughs> Item 1.4 points. Okay. Uh, sorry. One point four point seven. We don't hear another need another hero. Uh, ten minutes. Debate time has been set for this item. Uh, sure. Will you make a little speak? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Vincent Murphy. Um, the bulk of the proposal is on page six. Um, the reason for bringing this motion now is to test the idea of the business meeting because we've had the hero committee for about a dozen years, if, if I recall. Um, and we, we keep getting asked the question, well, why, why don't we just make this permanent? Um, so I'd like to test it with the, uh, with the business meeting. The subcommittee, the hero committee, was actually split evenly this year on whether to make it permanent or not, 4-4, um, which is why it's listed as minority in 4-3. Um, it's worth noting that this, the annual extension, has been passed by the business meeting every year that the hero committee has existed, except in 2005. And even in that year, the business meeting voted 31 to 16 in favour. So actually that was 
it had been two thirds, <laughs> but it didn't well, make three quarters. quarters. Um, so in fact, the, in all the years except that one, it's been passed uh, for 12 years, and even in that case, a, 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 a new supermajority, if it's passed next year, uh, would, would have passed it as well. Um, well. Another point to make is there are currently three extended eligibility clauses in the Moose's Constitution. Um, 3.2.2 for works first appearing in a language other than English is already permanent. We already have that rule, you, the business doesn't need to come to the business meeting. Um, any works first appearing in a language other than English automatically gets extension already. So it's not like this is a new idea. This extension extends for works first appearing outside the US, uh, and then in the, the year of eligibility first appearing in the US. And then of course we have the third clause, which is specific uh, uh, extension because of limited distribution. This proposal doesn't affect that third one. We propose that the time's right to make this extension permanent. We know it's been used occasionally, roughly once every couple of years. Um, I don't have a list, you can look it up in the previous uh, record. Um, and I believe it does give World Cup members, uh, nominators, uh, a sight of good works. Um, I personally also believe that the, the critical mass of active nominators remains the, the U.S. members, who, the, particularly that group who join the Worldcon every year. Um, I think it's called the Super Selection, so that's uh, personal opinion. Uh, and I think that's likely to continue for quite a long time. We now even have a larger nominating pool, with the three years, uh, three years for uh, Worldcon nominations. Um, and I, from what I can see, the majority of those who actively nominate remain the U.S. regulars. Uh, just because people can nominate don't, don't, doesn't mean that they, they, they will. Uh, and we, we get lots of queries from people who don't realize that they can nominate for the Hugos, people who join once, for instance, particularly when the world comes overseas. So just as with the non-English language extension, which is already permanent, uh, if we do this, we can send a clear message about recognizing the diversity of works available outside the US. So the point that somebody has made about, uh, well, this, this only really affects the UK, I'd like to remind the point that somebody made yesterday, of course, the World Cup also goes to countries other than the UK as well. It also goes to Canada, it goes to Australia, it goes to other countries as well. This extension would apply for years when uh, it, the World Cup is also in those countries. It's possible an objection may come up with the 2005 case. Uh, when the World Gone was in Glasgow, where all the novels and the three related works were by UK writers. Well, that's true, but I think that was also a, a very, very special case. The previous World Gone had been Norris Gone 4, and all of the members of Norris Gone 4 were nominators. A couple of the, the works nominated were also guests of honour on Norris Gone 4. Frankly, 2004 was also a cracking year for UK works. <laughs> and um, to be honest, if you look in the locust list of the best works of the last 10 years, 2004 UK works did really well. I think it was a special case. If we, not, if we agree this now, if we propose this now, you have a second year to think about it and to see the results from next year's nominations anyway. I could be wrong. It could be it is a, every time the, the World Cup does go to the UK, you know, there, there are more UK works. I think 2005 was a special case. I don't think it will happen next year. But we can see that. If we approve this now, uh, you've got another year to ratify it. Um, there's a few other points of advantage that uh, I think would come from this. If you make it permanent, nominators then get an extra six months to look for works which could be eligible because they don't have to come to the business meeting. They've got until the end of the nomination period. Um, plus, it, doesn't, it means that works don't get especially advantaged if we give a work extended eligibility, it gets printed on the ballot, and I think that gives an unfair advantage. The third advantage is um, we don't have to keep coming back and the hero committee can retire. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why I'm in favour of it. Time and favour exhausted. Uh, time and favour exhausted. Let's switch again. Uh, Mark, Mark Olson. Okay, so, several points. It was, it was a good speech, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm going to try to address all the points as quickly as I can. First of all, uh, uh, dismissing 2005 as a fluke, well, that works if you can get away with it, but the reality is the one time we had during this period where we had a UK Worldcon, we had all five of the novel nominees being UK books, and in fact, eight of the 13 winners were UK winners, where you have a, a winner has a nationality. Uh, yes, it could be a fluke, but you could be struck by lightning crossing the way. You know, this was not a fluke. 
there, there's no question that UK members do vote and do nominate. Uh, when we set up the Hero Committee in the first place, we, uh, there was talk about making it permanent, and we decided not to. We decided not to because we foresaw that the markets were going to converge. In fact, that convergence is happening. I saw a number, I don't know if it's uh, uh, correct, but I saw a number saying that uh, e-books are now 40% of the market. Uh, I think most of us expect e-books to continue to increase regardless of whether it's 10%, 20%, or 40%. It's going to increase, and I believe the markets are going to converge, just as the U.S. and Canadian markets have largely converged. Uh, the day will come, and I personally suspect the day will come within a decade when uh, these extensions will be unnecessary. We don't need it, we don't need it when the U.K. Is, uh, is hosting a Worldcon. We're not going to need it. We should really keep it, and let's just hope for the day when we've got a single market and, and all works are equally advantaged. Uh, for the speeches against, so. Speech. Yeah, further speeches against. Like, well, the speech uh, in time in favor of the speech. Twenty right. years ago, I would have been strongly in favor of this. As a U.S. resident, if a book is, was published in Australia, I might well not have heard of it <coughs> for many months. I might well not have had access to it for even longer. Today, no matter where a book is published, if I'm interested, I will hear about it within hours. I can buy it electronically, I can buy it from Amazon.uk. The market really has converged to the point where something that is nominally not published in the U.S. is not significantly disadvantaged by, against being known by U.S. residents, U.S. nominators. So, uh, I had a point of order. Yeah. I'd like to share his opinion on this, this uh, amendment strikes... Could you step to the microphone, please? Uh, still going to lose. I'm simply asking the chair's opinion um, of this. This amendment strikes the first set, part of the first sentence of 3.2.3, uh, which is covered in the amendment 1.44, which we just passed. Um, it would remove that section that is amended by the previous thing and does that make that previous motion irrelevant, unaffordable, unratifiable? I would say that's a problem next year. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking as next year's list this uh, department head, no, Glenn, it doesn't cause a problem. It's easy to fix. Uh, speaking more to the baseline question that's being addressed, I, those people who don't know me, I like Al Reynolds. I think Al Reynolds is a wonderful author, and I buy every one of his books the instant it comes out. It used to be hard to do that. Right now, when Al Reynolds' new novel, and Al Reynolds, by the way, is a UK author who gets published first in the UK, right now, Amazon tells me that Al Reynolds' new book is about to come out. It doesn't even tell me what country it's being published in. I don't know. I don't care. I just say, I want that book right now. We are seeing the convergence of the markets. A good British author will have his books known immediately in the U.S. and it takes no more to click on it at Amazon and have it pop in it from a U.K. source than from a U.S. source. I don't think we need this very much. I still think we probably do need the hero because not everybody buys their books from Amazon and not everybody has that kind of distribution mechanism. But in 10 years they will. Time has been exhausted for this item. Move to, move to, uh, move to extend the date. You just seconded her motion. Okay. <laughs> I've been moved and seconded to extend uh, time five minutes for debate. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. The nays have it. And the time is now extended. Those in favor of this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? I believe we'll do a serpentine. Those in favor of this amendment, please stand.
Yeah, yeah, sure. We're voting on uh, item 1.4.7. Uh, we don't need another hero uh, on page, you know, which is uh, page six. Page five and six. Well, the, the actual motion is on page six. This is the thing. Okay. So, uh, and those in favor, please. One, two,
and therefore we should get rid of this geographical basing and say that we can elect whoever will best represent the youth that the business meeting thinks should be represented. Is there a speech against? Against. I remain Casey Gore. I have one concern, and this may not be valid, but I wanted to bring it up. Um, given what the Mark Protection Committee does, and the fact that the rules surrounding things like trademarks are different in different parts of the world, I think that it may be valuable to retain the idea that you have to have someone that's local to those issues to speak to them when they come up. That's my only objection. Speech in favor? I, I must admit to, I, I support this, but I, I must admit to seeing the last of the zones go with a certain amount of nostalgia. <laughs> uh, zones, the last few years we've been Hugo mad, but for, for the first 30 years I went to World Cup business being the zone mad, rotation mad. So it's, it's a loss. At any rate, uh, it's time for this to go. Uh, we kept it in in the first place for the Mark Protection Committee because the Mark Protection Committee was created out of the old standing committee, which uh, many felt was an attempt to create Wisma's Inc. And we wanted to keep control so that no small of fans could seize control. That's silly. Uh, it, it, I, I, I compute that it would save over $300 over the next 100 years just in the book, world program book printing books. <laughs> <laughs> Speech against. Kevin. Yes, Kevin Stanley. He's like, while I too would be sad to see uh, our references to Sombia de Viguelon disappear from the Constitution. <laughs> Uh, I actually do uh, speak against this. I still believe there is some va there is value in uh, having some regional restrictions involved, and I uh, question whether the members would necessarily who are proposing this might be as happy with it if it would end up with oh let's say all nine elected members being from California. Speaking specifically to the point of um, diversity, the, there is the other um, element for the Mark Protection Committee, which is drawn from each world comp, who nominates a member of the Mark Protection Committee for a certain length of time. Um, that answers the geographic diversity that's needed when Japan has a, a world comp, Japan nominates a Mark Protection Committee, when the UK has a world comp, uh, they nominate a Mark Protection Committee member. So I, I am therefore in favour of the amendment. Speech against? I'm still Howard Rosenblatt. I, my concern, uh, Mark, is that maybe the geographic is no longer, and it's to Ben as well, the, the geographic determination is not there, but I'm not sure there aren't sufficient, there should not be some kind of distinction to prevent what Mr. Stanley says of nine people coming from the same area. And if it's not geographic, it may be an age thing, so I, I, I don't know what the criteria is for the Mark thing, but I don't think that ending all distinctions. My name is Mike Benista. I trust this body body to you. What's your name again, sir? No, put him in Greek. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, I don't have the, uh, the rest of the solution. Speak to the microphone. Be shorter. Alexis Layton. I don't have the constitution in front of me. Uh, does this remove any of the provisions to say how many members are elected? No. no. Perhaps I could uh, tell the, the 
for the two sections. The first one says, no more than three elected members may represent any single North American region as defined in section 1.8.5. Each elected member shall represent the region, if any, in which the member resided at the time they were elected. So the fact that there are nine elected members, and actually to stagger terms and all that, and they're appointed members, that's unaffected by this. It's just a restriction on the zones. 1.8.5 just defines those North American zones. Uh, we have exhausted time on it's this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> uh, given that the time was exhausted by an inquiry, I move to extend debate by two minutes. Second. 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 Hearing on debate time extended by two minutes. Another point of inquiry. Yep. Emiliano, I just wanted to make check that there's no repercussions from removing the definition of North America from the no. Constitution. <laughs> no, it, it actually just defines the East, Central, and Western zones of North America. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah. Still not dash on. Uh, as the points have been made about, we already have uh, wording in here to make sure that representation is on the committee from foreign world comes. You'll notice that today we re reappointed the same three members that were going off. If we're more concerned with having locations and not concerned with having the same people on the committee every time, I don't think that the locations are that important anymore either. Speech against? Um, no, well, you're recognized. Now. Now. 